What the fuck? Promises is a segment that I do from time to time about what our politicians are and are not doing in the space of getting us to a cleaner and greener world. And well, this week, I'm going to do a bit of a rant on the recent announcement by the Victorian and South Australian governments about taxing EVs for road usage. And well, in a country that basically has almost no incentives whatsoever towards EV adoption, this is a real kick in the guts for cars and for people for people who are making a difference and actually going out, buying these EVs and improving the air that we all breathe. So I would like your help in this space if you can, please. I want you to get this get this video in front of your friends, family, uh, work colleagues, but importantly, get it in front of the politicians. Start, uh, you know, put him into Twitter, say, at Daniel Andrews, at um, Lydia Ambrose, whoever, whoever it is that is your local member, they need to understand that we understand, we know what this is about. This is purely a tax grab. This is not paying for road usage. This is not making it fair. This is none of that. So yeah, let's make this right, shall we? Here we go. I'm calling out all state, federal and territory politicians. We, the people of Australia, expect better from you. And well, recent changes for improving our climate with more, more renewables, stabilizing our grid and trying to make things better to meet the Paris Climate Agreement are all good things. But it seems that for every step forwards, we seem to be taking three steps backwards. And well, we're sick of it. So let me explain. Earlier this year, New South Wales proposed a road tax usage on EVs, which quickly went away. But just this last week, South Australia and Victoria joined the conversation and are proposing a road tax on EVs because, well, they don't consume fuel and so are not paying their share of road infrastructure. Strange how, on the one hand, you announce like millions, hundreds of millions of dollars on greening our future and then the next second, you're thinking of ways to tax cars that don't pollute and save billions in healthcare costs. But no. No, 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 no. You expect us Aussies just to lie down and take it. Well, we're not, and here's the evidence to undo your lies and, well, actually a solution to your tax revenue shortfall. Because, well, hashtag COVID deficits. Victorian Treasurer Vic Palace said on Saturday he expected the charge to raise about $30 million over the next four years with the average motorist paying a modest charge of between $260 to $300 a year. This new tax means that the more kilometers you do, the more you're going to pay. So if you do 20,000 kilometers a year, the cost will be something like $500. Mr. Pallon went on to say that, if you're not filling your vehicle up with petrol, then ultimately you're not paying your share of maintenance costs of dealing with our road system. So this is essentially the government making a fairer system that is so that everybody pays their fair share of that wear and tear. Well, this is where it gets very messy because in Australia, we have a federal, that is like national tax on fuels of between 13.8 cents per litre for LPG to the widely known rate of 42.3 cents per litre for either diesel or unleaded fuel. These values got like twice per year and they're based upon CPI and they're introduced way back in the 1980s when they weren't very popular back then. So did you notice something? If you drive a car powered by LPG, you're paying 70% less tax than someone who drives a car that burns petroleum or diesel. So we're already talking about like a fairer system and what it seems our politicians are missing a significant proportion of our road users, namely taxis, which historically favored LPG due to its cheaper Bowser prices. But Due to shifting consumer preferences, as well as economic and policy changes, LPG-powered vehicles now only account for about 2% of passenger vehicles. However, compare that to electric vehicles that only number less than 0.6% of the total fleet of Australia. We're talking here about 300,000 or so LPG cars versus only several thousand EVs. Hmm... A few thousand EVs contributing $30 million over four years, or how about several hundred thousand LPG vehicles paying $300 million over four years? Yeah, okay. Now look, 
whilst I'm not looking at people not doing their portion of fuel taxes, we need to turn our attention rather to the fuel tax credit system. Yeah, that's one that's been designed for businesses to get back money that they paid for fuel. Bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? So, given that businesses are the main road users traveling like six times more distance than private vehicles, it's it is see that this government, again, is looking at tiny minority of EVs when in fact the ones who actually use our roads the most, consume the majority of our petrol, and therefore pollute the most, are the ones who actually are contributing the least amount of tax. Yeah, get that. Is it equitable? No. Is it fair? No. It's stupid and the very thing that we should be trying to stop. But... Here's the thing that everyone needs to remember, and it will blow your mind. Fuel excise does not go directly to our roads. Huh? Yeah, I'll say it again. Fuel excise does not go directly to our roads. So whenever you hear statements from the Victorian treasurer, Tim Pallas, to say that EVs are not paying their fair share of road maintenance costs, he's lying. Because, well, fuel excise actually goes to federal coffers, that is, central revenue. In the last financial year, they collected about $20 billion from people filling up at the tank with petrol, obviously. Nice. Thanks. But those fuel credits, the, for those ones who are eligible, they got back almost half of that money to the tune of $8 billion. And so now, with $12 billion left in their wallets, what does the federal government do with that money? Well, they spent about $5.6 billion on roads. Uh, hang on a second. 12 take away 5.6 billion equals 6.4 billion dollars left for roads. But they don't spend them on the roads, do they? No, no. Fuel excise is also used on sea, air, rail, and other forms of transport, not just roads. Hmm. And then just run that back to me again. $20 billion in fuel excise gained and only $5 billion spent on the roads and about $8 billion given back to people who actually are burning this stuff and using it in businesses. Can you see, can you see why I'm angry <laughs> and why you should be angry too? But I diverge. The thing that is really going on here is not about taxing and well, getting road maintenance be, to be paid by EV users. No, it's actually about states and territories who are the poor little cousins and get their little breadcrumbs of money from the federal government. And they have their own roads and infrastructure to maintain and build. So they're having to think up new ways to get more tax revenue. And so what has happened with Victoria, South Australia, and maybe still New South Wales, is that they do a little bit of the razzle dazzle. It's like, yes, look at these several thousand EV drivers and they're not paying their fair share for our roads and maintenance. Yes, look at them, look at those EVs. No, no, don't, don't, don't look at those hundreds of thousands of LPG cars who are paying a lot less in fuel excise. No, no, don't look at that. And don't don't look at the billions of dollars we get out of, give out in fuel tax credits. No, no, no. And def, what's that? What, what, what is that? That's the fuel excise subsidies that we're giving to businesses every what, every minute? <laughs> no, no, don't look at that, don't look at that. No, there's no issue here, no. What's that? That's, that's a billions of dollars in healthcare costs per year. No, no, don't, don't look at that either, no, no. EVs, look at the EVs, they're the ones to blame. Sorry about that. Now, before I move into what this new taxi is and what it's gonna look like, I have to ask, did you actually read the Ernest & Young paper uncovering the hidden costs and benefits of from electric vehicles? They detailed that replacing a petrol or diesel car with an EV will deliver $1,370 in benefit to government revenue and $8,763 net benefit to the economy over a 10-year lifespan. Did you read it? Yeah, no? Okay. Well, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link down below. In fact, everything I'm talking to here in this show, you can read it up yourself. So please do follow those links. So... The significant benefits avoided from emissions, particulate matter, and, well, you know, replacing diesel cars and buses in particular, 
and what the benefits they have on human health, decarbonizing the world involves like many things. It's, it's renewables, it's circular economies, it's also EVs. And it seems that you're ignoring the very solution and you could actually help improve the world in which we live. So your multi-million dollar budget problem could be solved if you actually look to how to incentivize people into EVs and not away from EVs. So if you're actually serious about saving taxpayer dollars and you want to actually do something about investing and in electrifying our buses and trains and trams, and then maybe doing the most efficient method of transporting people that actually cost 80% less to run. And whilst I'm trying to focus on your stupid EV road usage tax, I can't, I can't not argue it without showing the benefits that EVs actually bring. But sadly, no. Here I am making this video now for probably the 10th time in the last two years or so, hoping, hoping that someone smart enough has actually listened to it and can do something about this and change this policy and turn it around. You see, your problem is not about EVs maintaining roads. No, your problem is around about fuel excise. It's around road funding, it's around subsidies, and it's about taxation. So let's look, let's look at this new tax and we'll consider what it will mean, okay? So first, the tax of 2.5 cents per kilometer for a fully electric vehicle and what 2 cents a kilometer for a plug-in hybrid will mean that an electric car that travels about 20,000 kilometers a year will have to pay about $500 per year in tax. The stupid thing about this tax is that for a car that burns stuff, they will actually be paying less compared to an electric vehicle. With so few EV car sales occurring in Australia, just 0.6%, which is about four times less than most other developed nations, this tax disincentivizes towards people towards EVs and well, kicks them in the gut for those who have actually done so to help improve the air in which we all breathe and well, the legacy that they're trying to leave their children. This tax will mean fewer people will buy an EV because right now in Australia, there is little to no incentive to really buy them. In Victoria, you get $100 off your Rego in the ACT. You got, it's a lot better there actually. You get like free Rego, no stamp duty, and uh, an interest-free loan program up to about $15,000. So go ACT. But for everywhere else, there's a real policy vacuum here and lack of actual real incentives to get people to decarbonize their transport. And it seems weird that just this last week, Victoria's announced more than $700 million in renewable things like batteries, social housing, and uh, solar, and really awesome things that will help improve our environment, and other really great programs all around the nation of ours. And then looking to overseas where uh, in California, they give almost $40,000 in uh, incentives to get people to uh, EVs, Norway, or well, many other nations, including India and China. But again, coming back here where it matters, sadly, we're the only country in the world who are putting up reasons to not get into an EV and will transform, transform the world we live in. So you know what? I'm gonna fix it right here, right now. First up, Introduce an internal combustion engine car ban for new sales from 2030. Next, roll out fuel and tailpipe standards. Make it harder and harder for fossil fuel and car companies to keep doing what they are doing. Without a whip, or is it a carrot, they won't change their course. After that, phase out fuel excise and fuel credits over the next 10 years. Say 10% decrease per year. Voters will love you but at the same time, introduce a road user tax based upon the number of kilometers you drive. This will be done on two levels. So for conventional cars, ramp up this usage tax at 20% per year, but for EVs, wait until 2025 and then do the same for them too. And well, that's it. A system that is fair to all. Those who use our roads a lot pay more. Those who don't, well, they don't. And importantly, these policy points, which are like free to use by the way, so yeah, go on please, still shamelessly, I, I implore you. They will incentivize drivers to get into cars that are cleaner and greener for our environment and also give businesses the message that Australia, like UK, America, Europe, China, heck, almost every other country in the world are serious about improving the air that we breathe, the health of its citizens and addressing climate change. 
This tax should have never left the drawing board and been left in the ground along with gas, coal and any other fossil fuel that is lining your pockets. Okay, well that will do it for this week, a very short and sweet episode. Now my Patreon has got to see a bit more news than this, but if you, if you want to go check that out, please follow the link up there, where from as little as a uh, coffee per month, you can get exclusive behind the scenes content, news, polls, more things you just don't get here. Yeah, I said that already, but you know what I mean. Otherwise, you know what you can do? Be good and be great. Oh